the lot onto the traffic light at Pedro Road. And there was some car standing there. I can't even remember what model. I'm sitting in the Lamborghini. I'm sitting there. And this gentleman in the next car, he turned his head around. And his eyes were like big. Never in the streets and the roads of Mumbai had he seen a slick yellow Lamborghini. And his eyes went even bigger when he saw me sitting inside. <laughs> you should have seen the expressions on his face. He was like, Swamiji, Abdi? <laughs> I wanted to pull the windscreen down and say, man, this is not my car. I'm the blessing man. 15 minutes blessing drive and it's done. The 15 minutes drive had turned into 35 minutes. I suggested to the gentleman, I think I need to get back because there's a very important meeting that I need to attend. Ladies and gentlemen, what this man did, when I just suggested I need to get back, shocked me to the core. I believe most of you would be shocked to the core when I tell you what he did. This guy broke down crying like a baby. I don't think any of you would cry the first day when you have possession of a slick yellow Lamborghini and are driving it for the first time. And these were tears of anguish. How do you know what tears they are? When tears are cold, they're tears of joy. When tears are warm, they're tears of pain and anguish. Check it out next time. But if someone's crying, don't take a thermometer. <laughs> don't test it. Others, you can test it for yourself. You know? I asked him what had happened. This man, the great difficulty spoke up and said, just three days back, my wife was quite deepest for divorce. He was driving a car, fancy car. He loved his wife, his children loved his wife. For some reason, the wife was quite deepest for divorce. And this fancy Lamborghini, expensive high-end car, put his wife in tears. This fancy, expensive, plush car couldn't bring him any hope. And I, while I was driving with him, I was thinking to myself, God, look at this gentleman. With all of the achievements that he has, a first class business, incredible amounts of money, tremendous influence and affluence, and with all of that he had, and the cherry on top of the cake was a Lamborghini. But, no. Ladies and gentlemen, therefore I say, if you truly want to know how rich you are, then count all those things that you have that money cannot buy. Hope, love, respect, dignity, character, integrity, acceptance. But wealth is a very broad term. Money is not wealth. Money is just a part of wealth. And you must have it obviously. All of you are looking forward to having money and you must obviously have it. But it's just a part of wealth. 2nd of February 2005. I was lying in our monastery, in our ashram, on the wooden floor, exhausted, tired from the anxiety last night. And suddenly a fellow monk, one of my friends, came up to me and woke me up, saying, he's leaving. He's leaving. I got up, gathering myself together, rushing to go to the room, when my dear friend, Stoker Krishna Das, was leaving his body. Memories were flashing through my mind as I was rushing towards this room. He was a monk with me, had stayed together, we stayed together. At a certain point, he had decided to move on and get married. He went out, he had taken a job in the hospital we run, the Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, as the librarian. He had just gotten married. His wife was pregnant and while the wife was pregnant, he was diagnosed with melanoma cancer. He decided that he wanted to leave the body in the monastery where he spent most of his time. We had brought him to our monastery. As this memory flashed in my mind and I was rushing there, I remembered every day I went to sing God's names to him on the harmonium. My tearful eyes, as I cried, Seeing a dear friend struggling with melanoma cancer. Every single time I looked at him, my vision was blurred because it was someone so dear. Yet, this gentleman was amazing. He had a beaming face. 
all the excruciating pain that he went through hadn't affected his determined resolve. You look at his face. Look at that smile. No morphine was working on him. I realized this stuff works. His wife had given birth to a baby girl. They brought the baby girl to right next to him. It was the last time she would see him. It was the last time his wife would ever be with him. Ladies and gentlemen, as I walked to the room, my Guru, Radhanath Swami, the author of the popular book, The Journey Home, was right next to him, giving him hope. I was astounded. Inside the little room, there were so many people. I was standing right next to him with my Guru, Radhanath Swami. Outside were 450 members of our community, all together chanting the names of God. What I saw here was a man who didn't have a Lamborghini. What I saw here was support. What I saw here was people. People who were there to financially support him. People who were there to medically support him. People who were there to spiritually support him. People who were there to emotionally support him. I was amazed at the kind of support this man had given. You know what I'm saying? When you're born, people love you. And when you die, people love you. In between, you have to manage. <laughs> and this man had managed truly well. He had invested so much in relationships with his people that when he was in dire need, people had come to him. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is important for us to have support. Wealth doesn't just mean money. Wealth means money plus people and support. One gentleman said, do you know what's the difference between complete and finished? He said, if you find the right partner, you're complete. If you find the wrong partner, you're finished. <laughs> but if you find the right one catching you with the wrong one, you're completely finished. <laughs>
Is this what's left out of my father? God, all what I've spoken, read, heard, and spoken in so many different forums, including the British Parliament, had dawned upon me suddenly in that one moment. It's all gone. I'll tell you something. It's quite amazing how the sobering moments are. They bring to your heart those important priorities which truly matter to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have to evaluate what is of importance to us. What are we going to hold? Grudges? Anger? What? When we go, we need to leave a legacy behind.